jeepers you're listening to smash or pass hello everyone welcome to another interview on the jb and millie channel i am jb and of course with me is millie hi and now we've got quite a cool reunion special here we have both kate melton and nick pilatus so hey. thank you both so much for joining it's an absolute pleasure to have you both here and so i'm going to try and structure this as best as possible and going through your process, going into becoming both Daphne and Shaggy, respectively, for Scooby-Doo The Mystery Begins and Curse of the Late Monster, I will ask, prior to being cast, what was your, almost what was your earliest Scooby-Doo memory? Okay, hi. I, my earliest Scooby-Doo memory, I watched it always growing up. I loved it. And um, I had quite a bit of Scooby-Doo, like, clothing as a child, I remember. Um, so there's actually a great photo of me on vacation with my parents and I'm in a hammock with my dad and I'm asleep and I'm wearing like a Scooby-Doo shirt. Um, and I think it, actually one of the movies they had asked for childhood photos of us. Do you remember that, Nick? I think it was going to be something to do with the credit. You don't remember that? Is I think so. Yeah, I think so. That was one of the photos that I sent in. Um, they didn't end up doing that or using it, but um, just I just always remember kind of having it in my life. Yeah, uh, as far as my earliest Scooby-Doo memory, um, I don't have a specific one, but I do remember watching um, all the old Hanna-Barbera cartoons quite a bit as a kid. Um, so like Scooby-Doo was definitely on there. Uh, Johnny Quest, I watched a lot as well. I love Johnny Quest. Um, and so, I don't know. I don't have a specific one, unfortunately, for you of what my earliest was, but I just remember all those times as a kid sitting in front uh, of the TV on Saturday mornings and uh, watching the cartoons. And how about the involvement with the Mystery Begins? Do you remember, you know, when you first heard about the auditions and what it was like to prepare for them? I do. I remember um, every girl in town that was my age was auditioning for it. Um, I was <laughs> <laughs> like everybody I was pretty young I was like um 14 I think when I auditioned for it for the first time and um everybody was auditioning for it it was a big I'm sure you had that same experience Nick where like every guy in town was going out for Shaggy um and I just thought wow what a really fun you know fun experience and actually the casting director Harry Greenspan I had known for a long time and so I was ex I was always excited to get in a room with her and get to audition for her and yeah I, I just remember being excited I went out and I bought like a purple dress and I wore it to my audition and yeah I guess the rest is history Nick uh I actually don't remember hearing any other guys that said they were auditioning for it I mean obviously I knew there were because that's just the way it goes right. uh right and but I think the first time it really hit me that I was like going up against other people, cause you try not to think about it. You're like, look, I, I don't need to know how many other people are. Uh, you sometimes get in uh, casting call rooms where- I think about it. I, I used to think about it. I was like- Really? <laughs> I just remember at the chemistry read where there was that one other dude and that's when it really hit me like, oh boy, it's me or him. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, there's plenty of other auditions where you go into like a more of a cattle call kind of situation and you see a hundred other guys that look just like you and you're like oh well okay <laughs> but I don't remember that so much for for this one um I just uh I just did my best and had fun I feel like it was a little different for you because I feel like there was never going to be another shaggy like with you in existence and auditioning for that like it just was always yours I feel like I, I'm glad there for really, the faith you had in me. <laughs> I could have could have done it, but you like it was just always going to be you. You were perfect for it, so you probably that's probably why you never had that experience. Oh, well, I mean, I think that you were both absolutely perfect for the roles, but I am curious to know: was there any additional pressure on either of your parts going for these auditions where you were going to be playing iconic characters versus, say? if it was the same type of role, but with characters that no one had ever heard of, there was no pre-established fan base or anything like that? Oh, a hundred percent. I see, I feel like I was so young that I was just like, whatever, this will be, this will be fun. Like, I feel like I didn't really think about that at the time. I don't think it really hit me how big of a, I mean, I knew obviously that Scooby-Doo was iconic and that it was, it was, but I didn't realize the fan base, how seriously they take it at that point. Did you, Nick? 
Uh, I mean, I didn't necessarily know about how seriously the fan base took it, but no, I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, JB word, like auditioning for such an iconic character is way, way bigger, a way bigger deal. Um, because you know that if you get it, you are going to make that role for a lot of people and also anger a lot of people with however you play it like there's there's no way you can play it that that's going to satisfy some people if if you were if i had done exactly casey Kasem to a t like i was perfect for his voice and i emulated the cartoon perfectly there would be people out there who would criticize me for that and say wow he didn't even make it his own at all you know so it, it, there's a lot of pressure going going into any role with a preconceived uh conception of what it should already be see that's the thing that's the thing there's that pressure aspect but i'm very curious to know if there was a, a kind of like a half and half where on one hand it may have been perceived as easier because unlike if it was say completely new characters that pete that nobody had heard of it would be like it's what the director's looking for i don't really know what he's looking for so i'm gonna just kind of go for it or is it if i do follow closely what the source material is maybe i stand a better chance was there an element of maybe some parts you wanted to keep faith for the cartoon some people like some aspects you wanted to make your own as well yeah so um so i think that there's always gonna be as i said kind of even parts of both um where yeah you do want to emulate the character as best you can but you also want to start fresh and kind of make it your own um I think there's instances where that can work. Um, and then I also think that there's instances where it doesn't. Um, I know that right now, uh, who's the guy? Uh, Hemsworth, Liam Hemsworth, right, is getting a lot of flack for um, taking over Geralt of Rivea um, from, uh, oh gosh, well, Henry Cavill. Um, so, you know, It'll be interesting to see how he does with that of um, taking a very pre-established pre character that everybody loves um, and then making that his own in, in a way that distinguishes him a little bit from Henry Cavill. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never watched The Witcher, Katie? Oh my God. Gosh, it's so I'm, good. But I'm sure that it's great. I just, you know, I have a I have a two and a half year old, so I don't get to do much but work and chase him. <laughs> but I'll put it on my list. It's so good. It's I mean, maybe it's not really your style either. I'm a much bigger nerd than you are, if you guys can believe that. <laughs> Some things never change, you know. <laughs> So can I ask, going into the audition stage, how much did you actually know about, you know, the project, say who was going to be the director of it, where, you know, it was going to be filmed, that sort of thing? Did you um, know? So did I know all of that going into it? Yeah. I mean, I feel like when you get an audition, so when you get an audition, at least in the United States, normally what happens is you get um, a breakdown associated with it. So it'll say like, director i i don't remember specifically but i feel like i do remember knowing that it was the director of the flintstones like i feel like that was something that i knew um mm. and we met brian pretty early on in the process yeah, he was at my first callback i think i think he was at mine too um so we met him pretty early brian levant of course who you guys spoke to who i love so much um so i i, I don't remember knowing about vancouver but I, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like probably there had to have been some knowledge about it, at least from my representatives, because they usually release that kind of information. But I was just so excited to, it didn't matter where it had filmed, like I would have just been so thrilled. Um, and, and then having Brian as a director was definitely like icing on the cake for me because I love the Flintstones and I love Jingle all the way also. It's a great, it's a classic. So I was really excited about that. Yeah, I wanna say I didn't know for quite a while actually because i don't know for me personally i didn't want to get too invested in it i didn't want to get too excited until i actually got the role um because you know that's just the way it is as an actor you you get excited about something and 
uh, it's just going to lead to <laughs> possibly more, more pain uh, when you don't get that role. So it's always best to just not be super invested at first and kind of just go with the flow. Um, but once I did get it, I think I ended up looking up who Brian was and yeah, I freaked out a little bit too. I think I told them this last time, Katie, but do you remember for the second movie when we did the table read at Brian's house? Um, yes. How there was the Turbo Man doll on his mantle and I freaked out. Mm -hmm. I do remember that. I also have a, um, like a photo strip somewhere in my house that you and I took at Brian's house. Oh, really? <laughs> I think it was when we went actually to table read the third one. Remember, we went to his house for that. Was that it? Was that it? It wasn't the second one. It was the third one. I, I think we may have gone for both, maybe. But I definitely know we went to his house for the second one, um, or the third one. Sorry, excuse me, the third one. But I do. I have a. He had the cool. He has the coolest house. He had like photo booths and Turbo Man and like just unbelievable memorabilia. Which I actually I have his book. I bought his book, and. Uh, um to see like all of his toys and everything is so cool because if you go to his house it's literally like that it's like a museum he's just a cool dude it's really it cool. certainly and seems also like all his animals <laughs> it certainly seems like it would be cool like you say we got the book as well and just the thought of trying to put all that in one house you imagine that it must be you know quite amazing and I know like you said he was involved quite early with the audition processes things like that do you remember what that was like how many kind of rounds of auditions you had to go through and everything i want to say six yeah it was like five five or six i think if i yeah i would say i would say probably six. Oh um, no actually i just i got cast straight away because like like katie said you know there was nobody else possible it was just foregone conclusion uh-huh <laughs> yeah. katie's famous um, wink <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember at what stage in the audition process you first saw each other as well? Because I think, like you said, weren't you together for a table read at some point? Nick, just describe the moment you very first saw me. <laughs> I was like, oh, who's this little girl? <laughs> um, tell them, talk to them about the, um, about the chemistry read. And then I'll piggyback on what you said. Um... Yeah, the chemistry read, I just remember showing up and being super nervous, and I really couldn't register basically anything. Um, I remember Katie was very personable and talkative and uh, very much having a good time, wanting to get to know everyone. Um, and I mean, I did the same, but inside I was just a, a swirling torment of anxiety. Because <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, this is really it. Whoa, don't know what to do with myself. Um, but yeah, Katie always brought the bubbly energy, um, wanted to just be friends with everybody. And I definitely did appreciate that. She was very sweet. Well, I think, I think that for me in that, that moment, like as crazy as this sounds is it was like, okay, well, I know it's us or it's them. So like at this moment, we better all like band together as best friends to like just be amazing and get this because we're either all going to get it or this other cast is all going to get it. And it would have been a totally different movie. I'm sure they would have been great, but it would have been totally different. And so I just, I like zeroed in on each of them and I was like, hi, tell me about yourself. Are we best friends now? Like, but I knew, but I already knew, I knew Philip. So I kind of already knew who you were, Nick. Yeah. The young so, actor uh, crowd kind of knows a lot of each other as it is i do remember that i do remember though now that you mentioned i remember that time you leaned over to me and you were like hey nick by the way if you need this other guy to like disappear oh my I got God. I got friends. <laughs> oh yeah you know me 15 year old oh, with, with friends in high places no i just i knew i like knew it was for them and i feel like we had an instant enough connection that obviously something clicked in the room and we got it Mm -hmm. well, um, how did you find out that you got it because I'm curious I've got a little bit of a vision in my mind of say Brian Levant calling you out of the blue after the interviews and after the auditions saying good news you booked the role and then there's like a big party like hey we booked it but at what point did you find out who else had been cast or anything was it a bit more formal than I'm kind of envisioning in my head like you got the role. This is packet number one, which will introduce you to the production. Packet number two, that will introduce you to the schedule. Like, what was the process like of getting the roles, and then maybe like the next couple of days afterwards? 
Nick? I honestly, I don't remember. Uh, I remember the phone call that I got. I remember where I was when I got the phone call saying I booked the role. Um, and then my agent just told me, you know, be on the lookout for further communications, emails, whatever it was, kind of announcing who else got it. Um, and then we got the script. Uh, obviously, that had all of our names on it as well. Um, but I don't remember the exact moment I found out who else was in it. Oh, I do remember, by the way, I, this should have gone to the previous question, but I do remember when we were all at the chemistry read, I remember looking at Robbie and being like, why is he here? He's not even blonde. <laughs> <laughs> was the other Fred blonde? I think he had like light, he definitely had lighter hair, I want to say. I feel like Shaggy was blonde. Was he? I feel was like the other guy? Shaggy had light hair. I think so. Huh, maybe. Maybe I'm thinking of him then. I knew right away. I, I Harriet, Harriet Greenspan called me. I knew. I asked who else is in it. And she was like, the people that you were with. And I was like, yay. And then I think that we all like went to IHOP or something. Do you remember Did that? Did we? I, had, I, I think so. do not remember that at all. Like we all met up and you don't remember anything why do i remember i have such a good memory um yeah we all like got together That's not true i remember random facts about nature and science <laughs> yeah, but you have it's, it's useless information we don't need it. it's not helpful to us right now <laughs> so my knowledge my or my memory is actually serving us in the moment it's true um but if you need to know about the element elemental table just ask nick he's got you covered periodic table yeah um, <laughs> Oh shoot. See, I was hopeful. Um <laughs> what did I say? It doesn't matter. Um I, I Harry Greenspan called me and said, you know, it's the same people. And then we did, Nick doesn't remember, but we did end up all getting together. Um and then I think that we had kind of like we had a few months where we didn't really hear or a couple of months where we didn't even really hear anything, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like it was this big excitement of boom, and then it kind of went Whoop, for like quite a while couple months because I went home I went home I left LA and I went home for like two months and then went straight to Vancouver and um so there was a little bit of a lull but once it ramped up it was really exciting we got our schedule we got our scripts we did a table read like it was really fun what were those first couple of days like on the set of Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Begins Nick? we filmed one of the last scenes on like the first day didn't we Katie I don't remember at all you don't remember that? Aha! I beat you. No, you got me. <laughs> like I remember moments like that. A lot of it, a lot of it is kind of a blur. Were we at? Where were we first? What location were we at? It was. Uh, it was the backside of the school on the like on the street. Oh, was that one of the first days? Yeah, like, think... it was one of the first days. I think we, we went so, back there towards the end, but we, we started there as well. Right. Cause we were at the school, we did all the school stuff first, didn't we? Mm hmm Yeah. That's and right. then afterwards we, we did all the underground creepy stuff. That stuff was so creepy. And that was like a haunted asylum. It was really mm -hmm. creepy. Um, yeah. but all I really remember from the first couple of days of being on set was just that, like that it was a whirlwind. Like it was just so surreal and it was the first big set I'd been on like that where like I was, you know, a principal on the call sheet. And so it was, it was just really surreal and like getting, you know, to be in Vancouver and we're like in a different city and we're like being put up in a nice hotel. Like it was just, there were so many exciting things that were happening. You weren't the principal, by the way, Katie. <laughs> Beetle oh, no, and Brides were the principals. Beetle, Beetle and Brides. I guess my memory isn't very good after all. No, Vice Principal Beetle and Principal Grimes. Gosh. Well, in show business, we call elite a principal. So that's what I meant for all those viewers out there. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Like, there, you know, it certainly seems like you jump straight in, like you say, perhaps jump into one of the last scenes first. Was there any favorite kind of memories or anything you have from your time on the first movie? You go first this time, Katie. Me? Okay. <laughs> um, I just really enjoyed, like I said, being in Vancouver and on the weekends, we would sometimes go and explore and do stuff. And um, it was just, it was just a really cool experience. It was really cool to work with Brian, to learn how all the CGI stuff worked for Scooby and just to hang out with my castmates. Like we had a really, really good time when we were in Vancouver um, and just made this cool thing that 
last has lasted so long and will last forever. I mean, that's really, it's all kind of wrapped up in a bow for me. It's hard to think of like specific things. Do you remember the robot dancing guy that I always wanted to go see? Was he like one of those guys like on the street that's like yeah. painted? Yeah. Vaguely. And he had, he had, I learned later that he had this like insert on the roof of his mouth that he would like blow into and it made really authentic robot noises. It was so cool. I went there multiple times <laughs> to give the guy like a dollar in his underwear. I remember that you didn't drink and you were so excited about ice. You were like, I'm going to drink you guys. I'm going to try ice wine. Yeah. And it was the whole thing. Nick's quest for ice wine because Nick didn't drink. And yeah. So it was and there like, was somebody, one of the production guys had told me that um, like there was a specific brand that was better. And so I like went on this hunt to go try to find a good one. And I can't even drink ice wine anymore. It's too syrupy. But. Yeah, what I, I don't think I ever well of course I didn't try it I was underage but um <laughs> the, the ice wine man that was that was quite a quest a quest for you for sure so I guess kind of in terms of the memories afterwards as well do you remember the first time you got to see the mystery begins when it came out did you all get to kind of do a bit of a viewing together of it was it the you kind of saw it a little bit later on if perhaps you didn't want to kind of rush back and watch what you'd done or kind of how did you feel about it when it came out we had a screening i, I think but at i know, Brothers, that, I know right? that when it came out yeah and i know that when it came out we watched it at your house mm -hmm. you and me and Haley. i don't think robbie was there but you and me and Haley, we watched it at your house mm -hmm. yeah but we had a we had a screening at warner brothers they had like a, a theater room type thing and then we also later um, we had like a big theatrical release screening in Glendale at a theater. Do you remember that one? You don't remember that one? <laughs> so we have bits and pieces, man. Bits and pieces. I remember I that one really well because I remember the screen. kids coming up to me afterwards and saying, do you live in a mansion? <laughs> You're like, no. I was like, an apartment. <laughs> oh. I mean, it did get quite a lot of fanfare, really. I mean, I know it's kind of like, it, it's it's weird to say, but there's a lot of those cool images that you see of you all at Comic-Con, and that just looks like such a fun time. I can imagine very chaotic on the other side of the table as well, though. Do you have any, like, favourite memories from that experience at Comic-Con? Comic-Con was great. I had a, I personally had a great time at Comic-Con. Um, I remember we went up to the sci-fi party on, that was on the roof of our hotel and we met the cl the cast of Glee. Do you remember? We met like Corey Monteith and like Leah Michelle. I don't remember Glee. I remember hearing that Zachary Kinto from Hero Heroes was there. Um, and I remember well, it was that. First year, and they were like, oh, we're on this show Glee. And I was like, that's cool. I auditioned for that. And then the, the, it ended up being Glee. And I remember being like, oh yeah, well, oh. that was a big. Yeah, that was a big show for a while. Um, I don't think I ever saw it. You know, I never, all I remember seeing like Gleek hoodies and like shops for like years yeah. and years. And... I never watched it. I just know about the curse, but that's a whole other podcast. We can talk about that later. <laughs> What's the curse? Of... Oh, all right, all right, all right. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Comic Con was great. We had such a such a fun time. Um, you know, just being in that giant, like, what do you call that? Like a booth? What would you, where we like signed the autographs? I mean, it was stuff? almost like an installation. The thing was center floor. It was huge. And our panel, I wish I could find our panel somewhere. I still, I like actually watch. the other day when I was unpacking, cause I just moved, um, I live in Ohio now. And uh, when I was unpacking all of my stuff, I, I found the Mythbusters pin from that girl. I think I mentioned it on oh, yeah. one of my on my previous interview but the the girl that I had mentioned that I really wanted to get the Mythbusters panel but we got there the day after and she said oh I actually got a pin signed by all of them do you want it and I was like what so I still I still have that and I just unpacked it yesterday huh? you took this nice you took this nice Scooby-Doo fans Mythbusters pin that they put like I said no no way no she literally like forced me to take it and to this day, I'm still grateful to her. So, yeah. That's kind of crazy because yeah. a lot of Comic Cons do like group like, <clears throat> signings for people that worked on the same thing. And those things can get quite pricey as well. Like, I know the last one we went to had the whole cast of, I think it was Greece, 
they were all like yeah. rocking up on that oh, gosh that would have broken the bank now would you both be interested at all in attending a comic con to ever, together in any capacity and where would you like it to be like in terms of like oh let's just have some scooby fans and let's try and travel somewhere where would like be the most ideal place for you guys to do a comic con together i mean san diego is Huh? Yes, yeah, no, I was just going to say Comic-Con is something I'm working on, which I was going to talk to you about, Nick, actually, um, since I started doing, I recently started doing cameos, and it just kind of reminded me how many people there are out there that are big Scooby-Doo fans that perhaps would be interested in seeing us, so I've actually, I've put some feelers out, but Nick, dream destination, San Diego? Well, that is, like, that is Comic-Con, right? Right, but, like, let's, if you could have a Comic-Con anywhere, like, because there's Comic-Cons all over. I mean, Not I really want to go. I really want to go to New Zealand because because oh. I want to see the Aurora uh, Australis, and I want to see where they filmed all the Lord of the Rings movies. So, because I'm kind of a nerd, we would not have the same interests on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to. I think I want to go to England. I think that would be so fun. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I was hoping cool. for. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, like... We were thinking that since the question got asked, if not before. So it was a selfish was question, selfish. really. Just, London, at least. Yeah, I would I mean, love. I would love to do. Yeah. I would love to do Comic Con or cons. I love to meet you know the fans and connect with them, and whether that's on Cameo or you know social media or whatever. I, I enjoy it. It's just a fun, fun thing to do. So yes, I would like to do that. I'm working on that. Nick. Oh wow! I will say that London would be a lot more of a a fun Comic Con than New Zealand. Like New Zealand, I think of you know more just to see the place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, London would be full of people and energy. It'd be really exciting. Would we'll ride the big bus. Yeah, I've never been. That, like I've never the been most cringy thing to say to you guys, like you, you must like all Americans must just be like, oh, London, the big bus. Yeah, either that or like the 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 clock. I mean, there's a lot okay. to see there, though. Yeah. Like, even because we live that far away, like far enough that it's 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 kind of work to get there. That whenever we go, it's just tourist of like, let's go see Sherlock Holmes, like. Yeah, so we're kind of like that as well. Yeah, it's far enough that we can be like a little bit touristy as well when we go to London. So that's good. It can <laughs> so happen. I, I guess kind of on the theme of Comic Cons, is there a Scooby item that you're aware of that you'd most like to get signed by somebody that's worked on the project? Nick? By some what? It just is there a Scooby item that you're most aware of that you'd like to get signed by somebody that's worked? on Scooby-Doo at any time and someone in particular that you'd like to sign it? That's a piece of Scooby paraphernalia. Um, I mean, I still have a lot of my stuff. I still have like the Wendy's Happy Meal. Remember that? I have that too. Yeah, I have that at my house. Mm -hmm. Um, You're saying from like the other movies though? I guess let's make it a bit like we could make it a bit like a, like a like an ego boost thing. Like, is there anything a Scooby item you're aware of that you would be there praying that someone, like some Scooby fan, brings to you for you to sign? And then when they're walking away, you can go, "Huh, I just signed something pretty cool." I mean, yeah, if they brought me one of the Wendy's, you know, Happy Meals, I'd be like, "Wow, I can't believe you still have this. That's super cool," because it was from our movies, right? Um, <clears throat> I actually did sign something recently for a guy on Reddit because I did an AMA um, and the guy said he was looking to get something signed by every person who's ever played Shaggy or something to that effect. And I was like, I mean, pretty short list, but yeah, you got it. So I just kind of sent him a little something. That's so nice of you. <clears throat> he actually donated 50 bucks to a charity of my choice for it. And I was like, oh, Oh, well, that's cool. cool. I would have done it regardless, but sure. <laughs> they did a Mystery awesome. Begins DVD set and plush that I've only been able to find in France, like on like the French eBay. That's something that I'd be like, I want to get that done, but I can't I find see it. That. What is that? That's cool. I don't have to send like a photo. Yeah, yeah that's please cool. do. Do you still have DVDs, Katie, or Blu rays? <laughs> My parents' house. My parents have it. But like, how like do they have extras? Because I have, I think I have three of each movie right now. I I talk, I asked Gary. A I little while go ago. buy it, and then we'll get some residuals for it. <laughs> no, I actually I asked Gary. Um, I said, hey, 
can I uh, get a couple of copies? And he's like, I'll have to dig them out of the vault. I said, please. Great. Could you get them? Yeah. I'll, I'll ask my parents. I might, I might, I want to, I need copies of the old, not G rated blooper reel. Do you remember that? Like the gag reel that they made for us, but like it wasn't edited. I, I, I do not remember what was on it, but I remember we did one of those. Yeah. I was hoping he might have just, a copy. Just to settle any, it, there's no like R rated. When she says no, not G rated. No, like if someone just... curses, it's on there. Like, yeah. It, it, was, it was just, yeah, it's funny. I think what we all really need to see is that Jonathan Winters scene. If there's anything that's going to be uncovered from that, I'd, I'd love it to mm. be that. Yeah, they just cut out a lot of his stuff. They cut out all of it. He's not in it at all. Wait, right? you don't even see him? I think you see him, don't you? So. Do you see him? No. They'll know. No. They'll know, yeah. Well, you may, all they mention is, oh, that incident at uh, Old Man Frickett's farm, and then there's the flashback. That's, that's oh, it. wow. There's yeah, and then the flashback that. ends when Robbie catches me instead of it, like, and then we run off. It's not like, I only know this because now my two and a half year old is into it. But it's not like I like sit at home and watch this every day, but my kid likes it. Um, But they, yeah, they run off, and then that whole scene where we're standing there talking to Jonathan Winters is just nowhere to be found. They cut it for time, Brian said. Yeah. Yeah, no, I do remember that there was a little bit of the farm, though, because he does catch you. Um, but no, I guess you're right. There's nothing of nothing. To My do beautiful, with. graceful, graceful fall out of the hayloft. Mm, yes, those oh, still those are adjectives. Mm. <laughs> those are not adjectives that accurately describe me because I'm not graceful. <laughs> <but that's good. laughs> Um, can I ask kind of looking at Curse of the Lake Monster, are there any memories from working on that movie in particular? that you you know that you enjoyed or that you can share the second one yeah um i'm just trying to think of what i said last time uh <laughs> i mean i always go back to eating the napkins because that's just <laughs> that's just the thing that that stands out to me the most and how hyper i got katie can probably remember that uh, you I, were always hyper well yeah but but like even more so after eating those and I was like I gotta get up I gotta run around and I like went down the stairs and up the stairs you remember that oh I do remember that was it yeah. fondant it was fondant right so it was just like basically sugar yep it was pure sugar and I ate a lot of it um the second movie for me I really enjoyed going this is kind of a deep cut of an answer but I enjoyed like when we went to even though I can't sing but when we went to um David Newman's house and recorded the songs mm -hmm. do you remember and he had like grammys and stuff and we were like this is cool i do remember um, that so that was really fun and i really enjoyed being on the beach the beach was cool um mm -hmm. to shoot some of those scenes like we just had cool shooting like we were in like malibu west lake like it was just a cool little area that we got to film in mm -hmm. i remember all the sand that got in my hair after i got flung into the sand trap I remember I, I fell quite a few times on the beach and I actually yeah, have a scorpion like, like a brutal <laughs> really? scene so I guess getting into the process of wrapping things up a bit obviously there was that third movie that was cancelled and we may or may not have acquired a copy of that script through various means and that was obviously you've got London time travel HD Wells so we much stuff that would have that's crazy you really did I mean, yeah, I'm surprised you both don't have it. I can send it over. Send it to me. I would love to see it. I, I've looked for it, but it's in like an old email address somewhere. But yeah, no, I would love to see that again. Yeah, I'll definitely send that across. Is, was there an aspect of that movie that you wish that you could have filmed? I mean, obviously the whole thing would have been nice, but is there like one yeah. section where you're like, I would have loved to have visited there or filmed that scene? Europe. And there was, I believe there's horseback riding for me in it. Um, uh, which was something that I had specifically requested because it was yep. something I was really into at the time. So I was really excited to get to ride horses and like be in Eastern Europe. And like, it was just going to be so freaking cool and get to go hang out with my friends again. And like, it just was so sad that, um, that it didn't get me. Yeah. I do remember Katie being excited, uh, about the horseback riding and, uh, I do, do you still have dreams about it sometimes? Yes, all the time that they've called and they're like, it's happening. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm 31. <laughs> I know. I tell them the same thing. I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm like, I'm almost 36. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> <out of the> <laughs> 
I guess on that, if you know, you would you ever be open to reprising your roles to either do the third movie or even in kind of like an animated voiceover format? Absolutely, hundred percent. They want to call me and they want to make me the offer. I'm in. Call me. So that was very much the answer that we all always were hoping to hear. (laughs) Uh, Do you have any upcoming projects or a place where people can keep up with you know your work and everything for the future? Um, So I am at Kate Melton coaching on Instagram. I now am a coach and a teacher and I have an acting studio um, that's virtually international. I have like clients in England, I have clients all over um, LA, Atlanta, but I also have a physical studio in Oklahoma City um, and we're going to be expanding in the very near future to another city and I can't say which one yet, but we're coming to another city and you can catch me there. I teach acting classes, um, workshops, audition coaching, all that stuff. So I'm I'm very much bringing in my knowledge from the Scooby-verse, the Scooby-verse, what a cool thing I just said, Um, (laughs) from the Scooby-verse into my career now. So that's where you guys can check me out, Kate Melton Coaching on Instagram. Nick apparently is on Reddit. <laughs> Wait, really? Oh, that's cool. Um, so I actually am going to be in something soon. Uh, I had a fan a few years ago who um, reached out to me for an auto- autograph. Sweet kid, his name's Simon. Uh, he and I have kept in touch very infrequently, but he ended up going to school uh, at UFC, USC um, for a little bit, that? film school. And he, a couple months ago, he reached out to me and said, hey, uh, I'm doing a little project for my thesis. Would you mind being in it? And I was like, for you? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And uh, so he's he's filming it, I think, in Pennsylvania. And so that's just like one state over. Um, and I'm apparently a bad guy that gets, I, I try to kill them or something, but then they end up killing me. I don't know exactly how, what, you know, Yay, revision of the script is. But yeah, it should be pretty fun. Um, and then I've recently started up uh, community theater again, just as a hobby for fun. But I will be doing, I'm, I'm looking for a good theater here in Columbus, Ohio uh, for now. So we'll see. Oh, I love to see that you're like back in that world a little bit. Like, do, like I did Robin thing. Hood. I know. I couldn't make it. Come see me. <laughs> it's like, if you want to come, I'm like, I can't, but I will. She was Someday. two hours away. I have a two and a half year old that doesn't let me do anything. Yeah, yeah. You know what that's like. It's crazy. But yeah. one of these days, I'll make it. We'll definitely leave all of the links and everything related to all that in the description down below for people to watch, along with everything to do with Cameo and hopefully, fingers crossed, some Comic-Con appearances coming up (laughs) in the future. So thank you both again so much for joining. It's an absolute pleasure to speak with you both today. And thank you to everyone for watching. If you do want to see more, then please like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for having us. Nick, I love you. Love you too, Katie Kate.